Greetings in the name of the everything. Ah, a long night. I uh, somehow when I got up today, I had no recollection of having put the. I did a a little pod from the road from the dental office because the lady there shared the gospel, sharing some scripture, sharing some talk about God and about. Uh, the prodigal son, and other things. And I just thought, um, you know, it, was, it really changed the atmosphere, but I, I wonder if you've ever had an experience where you're helpless in the dental chair and you're, you're being, you know, you're being bombarded with, with a spirit like that. With, uh, and uh, so it really kind of reiterated how uh, powerful... Uh, the Bible really is, and how powerful this this the whole story is. Though I have, I don't see an epic like this anywhere else in the world. A story that is so intertwined with, um, you know, not just creation, but uh, the way that God deals with real people, real situations, um, and how it all turns out perfect. As we, as we go, I mean, some people will say, well, what about the pain and suffering? It's like, well, you know, there didn't have to be a planet like this, I suppose. And, well, let me put it, let me frame it up in another perspective. Uh, there could have been a nice heavenly bliss and uh, beings just floating around playing harps and uh, singing praises to the Lord and everything just all nice. Yeah. Uh, I suppose a lot of people might find that boring. Rather than um, the epic struggle, both within a person and outside of a person, that really kind of sometimes becomes a, a life and death s struggle and um, a constant questioning of what is life all about. One thing that Suzanne said to me yesterday that I felt was important, she is like, well, once you're in this thing, there is no going back. You know, you've, you've already had the prodigal son experience. So, you know, we have to help each other out. And that indeed is true, and that's what we're trying to do here, is encourage one another uh, in the faith and just realize that this evil world it's not all evil, but I mean, the world can be very, very difficult. But with faith in God, um, you can, and faith in the Lord and sharing, you know, as we do uh, online and different things. I mean, it, it seems that though it may not be easy, there's a way to go now in Jesus, in Christ, that we didn't have before. Um, because before it was like suicidalville, right? Depression, suicide, you know, there's, right? But somehow we keep going. And we want to be a light. As he is in the light, we want to be the light. Because in Christ, we're all the same light. So that light bears witness of the true light. And the true light uh, is the doorway to all good things, to escape this bludgeoning matrix which obviously is a bludgeoning matrix and that's and I think you know that's where we have the cross as well you know uh, some people say well that's that's like an X well it's like a elongated plus sign I mean yeah it's really you know but it's also represents the doorway you know uh, the portal and that portal is is um, and then we have the, these memories of you know, uh, they're like ancient memories of this, I don't know, you, you, I don't like using words like paradisal or, or whatever, but of, of, of a pure state uh, without, you know, the, the hardships of this life and without the ticking clock of death that just keeps jamming at us. I mean, when you get to be my age, what happens is 
you know, you blink, the day's gone. It's 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 really unfair. I'm just trying to I'm trying to slow it down here right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Oh, but uh, we um, so we kind of stumble along, but w- with our faith and with prayer and um, getting into uh, getting into the Word and so on. However, we do it. I mean, I'm I'm sure I do it in a way that's different from you, but I draw inspiration. And strength. They say, if I'm really at a at a loss, um, I might just start with psalm, uh, psalm or two, and then move around. You know, and there are all these questions that remain unanswered. And like I said yesterday, I think the whole point of yesterday was uh, this idea of keeping everything really simple because, and not losing sight of just the real basic simple walk of faith. Because that's prayer. That's that's you know, uh, scriptural help. That's prayer. That's 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 uh, that's you know, putting on Christ. That's becoming Christ. You know, becoming a force of love. You know, I like to say a weapon of love, uh, which you can only do in Jesus. That, that because nowhere nowhere else in our in, in our way do we um, forgive when things are done. Uh, when people step on our toes and whatnot, it's a constant light. You see, that's the light of love, forgiveness, and and compassion, and and having to overlook the the way things are on earth, where where you know people are evil, they do evil things, and you know we're all scarred in some way from just what people do. Somehow we got to get on top of that to where they do whatever they do and it doesn't scar. And I think <clears throat> that's part of it is just accepting that, you know, the world is the world. You know, it's just it, it's just going to do that to you. And the more sensitive among us, you know, that, that recognize it as gang stalking, a lot of the gang stalking is just a, a more heightened sense of sensitivity because it's happening to everyone all the time. You know, so there is there is that, um, you know, and, and the other thing is the law of the jungle. If you have w- weakness and fear, obviously you'll attract, you know, instead of attracting, you know, nurturing and, and loving and and gentleness and a, and a healing word when you're fearful and. Um, and uh, and 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 in kind of a victim mode, uh, you attract wolves, you attract coyotes. You attract scavengers. You attract pain and suffering. It's like you're the last person on earth that needs more pain and suffering, yet you're getting more, and now you you can't handle it anymore. Uh, <clears throat> that goes back to the, that. That's literally the law of the jungle. In other words, if you were in confidence and not healing from the last thing and not still feeling ripped apart and and confused, uh, that you might not have been attacked you know, yesterday. And uh, the devil is always, always, you know, you know, when something's weak, pound it. Right? It's, 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 it's the law, it's, it's the way things are on earth. It is the way things are. When something's vulnerable, attack it. So when you're vulnerable and when you're weak and when you're fearful, you need to find that prayer closet. You need to find that space of peace away from everything and shut everything down. So that you can, you know, regather your forces, and um, you always have to present to the world this, um, you know, this this positivity. Because I, I tell you, having been so affected from the world lately, my negativity has 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 drawn to me nothing but um, more negativity. My being bummed out, quote quote unquote, by the world. And especially lately, the the, the 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 you know the pollution of the environment that the uh, U.S. government does, and the environments of the world. I mean, you know, they do the whole world. I I just get so depressed over that I couldn't even get out of bed, and yet in that state, more attacks come, and discord amongst people that I have usually good relations with. Uh, it all uh, you know, or disconnect is really more the, and that comes from. Um, you know, because I showed weakness. And it's just, it's just animal instinct to attack that, right? Okay, so given that, no, once you understand that, you, and that's kind of a key to the whole thing. Because you realize that you've got to be 
in the light as he is in the light, meaning you've got to uh, somehow be transformed into this, um, this attitude, this Christ-like attitude. And of course, that's en enigmatic because it completely makes no sense. And what that does is, in a spiritual warfare mode, is it throws people off. They don't understand what, what the heck's going on. And then they question themselves. Then they become fearful, you see. Then you put them back on their heels. And then, and then you are walking free, but you're walking in love. You're not walking in, in uh, simply being um, vigilant, you know, ready to attack if you if attacked. You've gone to another step beyond all that. You've already, you're already walking in victory. And in walking in victory, they really can, all they can do is burn their eyes out on your, on your light. And just bug their eyes out, but they can't, but, but feel paranoid themselves. And I've, I've been through this a million times. I don't know why I haven't talked about it more. But uh, it, it really is like the law of the jungle. You show fear, you're attacked. You show pain, you're attacked. You show bummed outedness complaints over <clears throat> how overwhelming it all is. If you're overwhelmed, you're attacked. And you will be every time out. Uh, if you feel overwhelmed in your person, but you're putting on a mask of being a confident, but you really aren't, you're going to be attacked. It's going to be tested. Just like when you are confident, it's tested. Right and and uh, when you're in the right mode of thought in the right mind, when you're attacked, basically uh, it strengthens your walk. You get even stronger and even brighter. When you're in Christ, you know it gets every attack becomes more strength. Every attack becomes a lot more love. Every attack becomes more forgiveness. More, more um, you know, preference of the other guy, and even healing of other people. We haven't talked about that in a long time, but that's, um, uh, some of us are like, have healing gifts and things, and um, you know, that, that's another thing, is we heal one another. When you're in the, I mean, if we go back to Pentecost, we look at speaking in other languages, and glowing like big, you know, bright light bulbs, and all of that, uh, you know, anointing, and you could, you know, walk by and you're healed. You know, the, the Peter could walk down the street and, everyone, and all the people there got healed. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's available now. That's always available. Uh, Pentecost is, 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 is um, you know, there were all the spiritual gifts, but the gifts are given freely and without repentance, and those gifts have flown from then to this day. And that's, those are the gifts in Christ that are specific to Jesus. And <laughs> it's just a glimpse of, um, and there's even more, but uh, it all comes down to, you know, your inner being transformed and aligned with the outer being. So it's no longer a hypocritical situation of putting on a mask that isn't really you so that you can cope with the world. And people do that every day. In fact, 99% of the people that are out there in the public going to work and going about their business, all are wearing masks. You know, especially in America, they all feel nervous, they all feel insecure, they all feel in pain, and it's kind of by design because that's what the uh, social engineers wanted to do with America since America wouldn't fight back and America, you know, was like a lamb to the slaughter. I'm saying past tense because it seems like it's kind of over at this point. Um, but uh, it's because I think America went down uh, because people lost their faith. Because everyone's going to, you know, you're, there are times in your life where you're going to lose your faith. I found that, you know, I was, you know, ha having the, the, the benefit of education but then having the curse of education where... You know, you have all this comparative religion and all this, all these ideas, and you, and you, and you, you, you recognize a conspiracy of religions that are controlled by the opposition, and then you recognize that all those pastors, priests, you know, gurus, whatever, are fake, and then you, you know what I mean, and and all that cynicism uh, can can 
have a deleterious effect and causing um, a lo loss of faith. And, you know, this is uh, something that we, uh, it's, that's why I was, you know, why I was kind of reeled back to the faith of a child because, see, there's, that's the strongest faith. And the, the faith through simplicity, just a simple understanding. And with the simple understanding, then what happens to the doctrines of Ben? Well, I suppose you could call everything a doctrine. You could call John 3.16 a doctrine. Um, but it gets back to John 3.16, right? And, uh, and, and it just gets back to the, 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 the understanding of why, since we're born in sin, um, since we are, you know, if we're tied to Adam, you know, who fell, and however that happened, whatever that story means, it's the fall and it's then gone on through the generations. Now... I know people have argued, and I, even I have argued, but I'm, I'm coming off this argument and I've kind of worked through it, that um, the, the doctrine of original sin is like, I didn't do anything, I don't deserve the, the if Adam fell, it's, it's, it's describing a genetic situation, it's describing, you know, we're born into this situation, okay? And um, it's the same fallen condition that, that we saw with, with Adam, and then everyone who is connected to Adam or human has this fallen nature, this fallen condition. If you keep it on that level, it gets out of all the, you know, the need to, to tear it all apart. And, and you know, it's just, it's just a way of saying, it's a way of saying, look, you're born in a fallen state. <clears throat> this is not your natural state. You have fallen. You're born that way. You didn't, you, you don't remember or don't don't maybe understand why but for whatever reason you were and are born in sin which 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 the maker can't look on and that that is like a a very almost simple way of of looking at it and so you need to be redeemed through the blood of Jesus which which God provides so that um, this curse that you were born into is broken once and for all, and you can walk free again. And that's the gospel. That's the good news that God provided a way. And I have tested this way as much as I've intellectualized it and as much as I've tried to tear it all apart and never have been satisfied, by the way, by all, all kinds of arguments that I put forth and I've heard from other people not one time have I been satisfied, except when I just look at it as, as a simple thing, a simple understanding. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, I, I definitely have the fallen sin nature. I definitely need Jesus. I need the Lord. I need Jesus, what he did for me, in order to be reconciled to the Father because, and, and, and to, to, to my, you know, to whatever. I, it's not really matter to me whether I had a prior state of existence or not anymore because I'm dealing with this right, and this is what I'm dealing with right now. I need that redemption, I need that connection. I need that sanctification, I need that justification. I need that eternal life, I need, I need there's something wrong and I need to fix it. I can't fix it on my own, but, but God can fix it and I need to go to God to get it fixed or it's not gonna be fixed. I've never seen anyone outside the Lord who died in peace. Um, they just died. I, whether they were in peace or not, it did, you know, how can you be if you're not reconciled to God? I understand the world is such darkness now they don't even know there is a God, which is, which is horrifying. And that's like saying there's, you know, it's, there's no sun or something. You know, it's, that's like saying well, we don't live on the earth. It's on that level. I don't, know, I don't know what to make of that. But that's what I need. I need God. And he, you know, when he took me up, he, um, you know, took me on this journey through the churches. And he, he, someone showed up at the house and put a Bible in my hand, you know. So that was, I think, God telling me, there, that's what you, you go by that. Knowing that I've been through all the other. I had a whole library. I still do have a whole library full of uh, all the other books. And... Um, but that's what he put in my hand. And I always had this very simple statement. You know, I dance with the one who brung me. And as, clo as close to losing my faith as I've gotten at times, 
I'm always reeled back in, you know. Um, so that's uh, just, it's just amazing. Just like yesterday, I was reeled back in by this woman who had held me captive with the potential to really give me pain <laughs> in this chair. And uh, I just think that was delightfully funny. <laughs> I don't know what you can make of that. And that's why I thought I would do that pod right away while I still had the spirit on me. You know, I, still, I felt like there was an anointing on that. And that was like a divine appointment, you know. Uh, and, and so I thought, okay, let's... So that's where that... And then I had no recollection of... I think maybe I, I may have drank too much. I don't know, you know. But whatever. I'm, I have to constantly repent for everything. It's, um, I always seem to be doing something wrong. You know, and uh, so it's 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 like that. But uh, the um, that law of the jungle thing, and you know, like when you're really paranoid, you bring on the paranoid thing seems to start coming at you. It's just, and it's a law of manifestation as well. We manifest that which we fear. You know, so the Lord has to deliver us from, and, and this is the other very practical thing about deliverance in the Lord. He has to deliver us from the spirit of fear. He must deliver us from a spirit of violence out there. He's the one that has to deliver us from violent people <clears throat> who are all around us. He's the one who has to walk us through the valley of the shadow of death. He's the one that has to set a table for us in the midst of our enemies. He's the one that has to give us good things because we can't get good things on our own. He's where, you know, and then that brings in the story of the vine, of Jesus and the, and the uh, you know, um, uh, in, the, in the book of John, uh, the 15th chapter, which we've gone over recently. Um, you know, I can do nothing without Christ that strengthens me. I can do nothing unless I'm connected to that vine, which is the Lord, and the, and, and the, you know, and the father is the uh, animal, is the uh, is the gardener, you know, and I've got to be connected to that vine, you know, or I can produce no work. I produce no fruit. The only way I can produce fruit, which is Christ's likeness, is to be connected to Christ. Without that, I have nothing. I'm just a, a man. Just a man can do some great things in cooperation with other men. And, and women, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I sound old-fashioned there, but uh, men and women uh, can do some marvelous things on their own. They can, they can become great athletes and gu guitar players and, uh, you know, inventors and, and all kinds of things that, that, that are marvelous. But what does it all mean, you know, if you gain the whole world but lose your soul in the end? If you don't have your soul in the end, which is, which is why the Bible is so important, because it explains that you have this soul and that, you know, you have to be in possession of it, you know, or you could lose it. And the whole idea is, well, then, then we ought to be about the business of the redemption of our souls. Um, and, and keep it on that level because, you know, and stay vigilant on that level because, you see, I've seen people with their souls who have given their souls away and they, they may be very successful in the world and, and they are. Some of them are tremendously successful and uh, amazing. But... They are troubled, you know, and have no peace. And when they do have peace, it's in the moment, you know, like, oh, that's a beautiful sunset or oh, that's a, but it's not a continue. There's a constant, you know, dragging thing. And eventually that dragging thing brings them down. And then the next batch of successful people take their place. And that's no way to live. That's, that's, that's the carnal way. And that way leads, unfortunately, to death and to separation from God and which is death. And so the, the vine story really needs to be understood as a connection to God through Christ or in Christ, in God as one, which comes in the 17th chapter of John, which, are, which is very esoteric. And really, you really need the Holy Spirit to really be able to, uh, um, to understand that because these concepts are like, as, as heavy as esoteric Buddhism, Hinduism, any of the, the great um, understandings of the I am and all that, it's all contained in that. But also what's contained there is the understanding of who we are in Christ, you know, and what it is. And, uh, and, and, and how, how it works with Jesus and this interaction. But ultimately, it, it just simply states that... Um, you know, he is in me, I'm in him, you know, as one, right? That, that there really is no 
you know, that we are basically in differentiation now, but ultimately we are just one. That is the, the people of Jesus that he, that he selects. Jesus and the Father and all of it is just is one thing. It's just like one faith. It, it's, it's one people. It's one, it's, it's one I am. And, and that is, you know, the perfect peace. I mean, that, that's the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the center of creation. <clears throat> that's the actual, you know, nexus point of, of beingness. And in, in that understanding, in that if you can receive that understanding, then of course there is no anxiety or fear because you have, in that state, inherited all things. Nothing is beyond you. You know, you are looking at it from the point of view of God himself. In fact, there's no, it's, it's almost like there's no difference at that point. And <clears throat> if, if everything you could do would be from that point of faith, then um, this world or another world or some other world where there's, you know, I mean, here there's predatory pain and conflict. And uh, in that state, of course, there is no conflict, right? But when you, it, it, I mean, what's, what's being described there was, was like the goal of Buddhism, the goal of Hinduism, the goal of all the religions <clears throat> is to alleviate suffering. Because that's what Buddhism came into being because of human suffering. That's why it was created. And the whole idea was, you know, you've got to go within and find the peace of, of nothingness and no desire in order to con conquer the suffering of humanity. And that's, and that's basically what Jesus does, and, and successfully so, without relying on the works of a man to accomplish it. In other words, it's given freely. You have it now, this moment. You've, you know, what the Buddhists may seek to do over, over their lifetime, achieve what nirvana, you already have that. You know, you've inherited all things through Christ. You do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You know that 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 uh, <clears throat> it's a, it's like it's it's really um, a subtle thing in a way. But at the end of the day, when there's pain and when there's suffering, and when there's uh, wounding and when there's hurt, the, this um, the remedy is is going to be the Lord. Now, I understand that all this stuff has happened through, you know, crazy charlatans online. <clears throat> the doctrines of men have gone insane since the Internet. I mean, the simple faith idea was, gone, was way out the window. Now you have every kind of theory and every kind of thing going on, and, and, I, and I just got tired of it, you know. I, I, um, there's, um, I don't care any longer about intellectually understanding why or how or some mechanics of it, of a thing. I no longer care. It's been beaten out of me. With all the confusion that I've seen <clears throat> and all the uh, inept teaching, and I'm sorry to put it that way, but I mean in all the, all the d d things devoid of the Holy Spirit and filled with a man's ego, with all these kinds of things, you know, the fake religion stuff, I, um, I it just freaked me out. It's like, well, where does, where can we go to uh, collectively worship? I mean, that's kind of an, you know, and, and we, 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 it's, it's mysterious. I think he, it's just like the old days. He's setting us out in twos and where we can find collaboration and, and, and peace together and pray together and, and, uh, certainly make music and different things, you know, under the Lord, you know, when, when you can, you know, uh, I, I don't know how you escape the, the, spec, the, the specter of judgmentalism, which kills people because it's really like a veiled form of throwing curses, right? And, and uh, death curses even, you know, just, just like a threat of death because somebody died in the Old Testament and look, you're doing the same thing so you could die. You know, that's the form of a curse. And that, that kind of thing, I, look, I'm really sensitive to... to that kind of thing really kind of throws me for a loop. So, you know, because I'm sensitive, it's like my dog, Dasha, the German Shepherd's very sensitive when they're puppies. That's why they need to be socialized constantly. And then they grow into these fabulous dogs. But they're made sensitive for a reason, so they can pick up on sounds and, and on, uh, you know, uh, 
be the great watchdogs and be, they know when the wolves are coming from a mile away. They know. Uh, Dasha knows way before Eli when a car, another car is approaching and barks because they're bred to be that sensitive, you know. So the, 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 their ears are uh, unbelievable. I've never seen any ear like this. They are just uh, more powerful than the wolf, more powerful than the, you know, and like huskies or malamutes are like wolves. They're more powerful than those, more powerful than I think any, any, anyone, really. Um, uh, but they're, they're, they're made that sensitive so they can, for, so that when it comes time to guard and, and warn from afar off and all that, they are ready to, to do just that. Um, and, and, and what that does though, when they're puppies is it makes them fearful because they're so sensitive to every little thing in the environment. And so they have to, you know, to get them over that, you have to, you know, really, like I say, socialize them, other dogs around people, situations, take them to the market. Of course we do all that, but you know, I love to take Dasha, for example, into PetSmart and just, she's always been like great in there. But the more I do that, the more that she can get over that sensitivity, which is part of the breeding. And, um, you know, or, or in, incorporate it. And so at some point, that sensitivity or fear goes. We saw another shepherd about six months, seven months at the dog park in Durango. And uh, it was the same thing. And the dog started playing, go, wow, that's different for her or for him or whatever. Because they have that, you know, at that age, there's that fear. They really need to be socialized at that age because they go, they can become fearful, and it's because they're bred to be really sensitive. And uh, it's, it's um, you know, it's a double-edged sword. The benefit comes later that you have the best watchdog in the world, and you know how fierce shepherds are. You know the canines and uh, that work with the police and, and, and military and what they're capable of. I mean, they're, 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 uh, they're unbelievably loyal, uh, and they're beautiful, and, and um, you know, they, they protect children naturally. You don't have to train that. That's just... That's just a natural thing that they do. So, you know, but, but you've, you've, it's up to us, the humans, to get, help get them through that and, and get them to the point of, you know, confidence in the environment. And that can only happen through uh, time to, and effort, you know. And, and if you don't put the time and effort in, then what happens to the dog is, well, then you have a fearful dog, you know. And um, uh so easily avoided, but it requires your time and attention. You can't just leave your dog in the backyard and expect it to grow itself up. You know, the, the intertwining of the dog and the human is just a really... So comparing that then to, to the human of sensitive people, you know, like I'm thinking artists and, you know, writers and, uh, you know, or just artists, which includes all that. Um, you know, and these are the people that become so disturbed with the society, and then when they produce works... Uh, it disturbs society rather than them being disturbed because that's kind of the function of art is to de disturb the, uh, the the status quo, right? And to encourage the uh, those who have uh, who are, are are put upon by the society who are <clears throat> maybe in the same state of mind of being sensitive and afraid, you know, and 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 put upon and and scarred and wounded and and you know art, you know, should lift them up and should make the Comfortable, uncomfortable, or however the, the, the old statement goes. Well, artists don't have to try to do that. They do that because of who they are. They just do that. Uh, this podcast does that. <laughs> it's, it's, that's why I tell people it's, it's not really a talk, like a talk show, a secular talk. It's really just simply um, a, a work of art. And, and I don't know why uh, it, it is that, but it, it has that function. Of, uh, of, of helping, you know, downtrodden, you know, people that have been really beaten up by this whole thing. And then, because <clears throat> maybe because I deal with that, or it's the kind of person I am emanates through the podcast. <clears throat> so God made me an artist, so then, you know, that's the, it's going to come through whatever I do. And, and then it's going to make people of the status quo, you know, of the, you know, the, what I used to call the religionistas, makes them very uncomfortable. In fact, it makes them angry, and they, they, you know, they've been known to uh, be so angry with me that they um, pretend I'm not there. It, it used to be they throw stuff, they throw rocks, but then, then when it goes beyond that. It, it, they actually get to the point where you become completely invisible because they can't take it anymore. And what is it that we're saying here that makes them so uncomfortable? We're saying that you know, the fundamental flaw you know, 
is that you can't serve two masters. You know, you cannot conform to society and have Jesus at the same time. It doesn't, it doesn't compute because Jesus is the ultimate nonconformist. He wants you conformed to, to the Lord, to that pathway, not to the world. And because of that <clears throat> problem, um, we have no peace in that, in that situation, and we're not going to. We would have peace quicker with other religions than we would with Christianity. And that's just the thing that people have to understand. Like the way I go at the scriptures, the way I do it, it's met with total disapproval. You know, they have a certain protocol, and if you don't believe the way they do and follow the things... See, I'm free to question things, just like the incident the other day. I'm free to definitely... Um, if, if I have this, this, uh, these gifts... I mean, I've run into people who said that any gifts you have are really of the devil. I'm like, you go F yourself, jerk. You know, and I can say F yourself. You know why? You can't because you're a hypocrite. You'd like to say it to me, wouldn't you? So I had to depart company from all these people, which is all of them, basically, uh, because they would keep um, throwing curses, you know? And I, I, I can't stop. I don't want curses thrown on me. I don't want fatwas put on me. I don't want uh, death curses put on me. And I don't want threats. You know, I, I, and they, well, we're going to hold you to account. You're a public, it's a, you're, you're free to take your shot. I don't need to listen. I don't want to listen. Yet at times Christianity becomes, you know, uh, just like witchcraft. And so I had to depart because of that reason. Because I don't get along well with, with witches. And so, because we are on two sides of a war. And, um, you know, so they're the enemy, and I'm the enemy of them. So that's, that's just the way it is. So when we have all this, the, we, have, we start off with the simple faith, and the simple thing being a, a weapon of love, be a force of love, be a force of light. Yes, but then when you go out there, recognize that this spiritual war, this war of the heavens is on the earth. And that, um, so you're going to be Christ-like, but you're going to also be embattled too. You know, so there's this, it's just a, it's just a bizarre um, thing the Lord asks us to do, but he asks us to do this. You know, um, the idea of being a fool, of being blissfully unaware because you're just so filled with love and light, is like what the New Agers do. That is not what the Lord is calling us to do. He's calling us to war. He's not calling us to bring peace. We are to be peace within us because we have all things, all things are made new. We are that. But we are being sent out into a war. So there's the other half of it, of the simple faith and simple walk. A simple walk is not walking around with your head in the clouds. And, you know, those of you who are victims of the gang stalking thing, you know, you're never going to get over the scar of that. And, and well, I don't want to say never. I don't want to. I don't want to curse you with that. Maybe you will. Okay. I don't think I will. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know. I mean, the, because it was what I saw was when the door was opening to the satanic, and I saw all the synchronicity. It just freaked me out. You know, that it was all supernatural. None of it was like because you'd think. Well, there's got to be a central planning office somewhere where they're launching it. It's like no. It's 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 like you. You step into a different alternate dimension where it's happening, and then you step out. And I'm aware that we don't live in a contiguous dimension, that we step in and out of various dimensions, one where the plane crashes, one where the plane lands, one where, you know what I mean? One where you die, one where you don't die. And I'm very aware of that. I'm so sensitive to that. And I can't explain it to anyone. Nobody seems to understand what I mean. And I say, well, look, man, you've gone through who knows how many dimensional shifts and translations in a course of one day. And you don't even realize it. And God manipulates all that to, to, to bring us through. If, but if it's your time to go, you go. But that doesn't mean you're not alive. Uh, this whole thing with um, uh, where people, you know, they, they don't like the fact that I have um, whatever it is that I have, you know, whatever, like the whole Paul Walker incident. They don't, if they just don't even understand that, you know, that I take things to the Lord. You know, I mean, it's, it's like it's the Lord chooses me to do a thing like he did with Paul Walker. 
and they misinterpret it because they're so conditioned, you know, and they have to, that's got to be, I, well, I don't, you know, I have nothing to say about it. I'm just, I just try to avoid, you know, um, conflicts. Uh, but I, I remember how fondly I looked at uh, uh, Jesus, you know, preaching to the antediluvians about the gospel and and that's exactly what happened here in Santa Fe. I was presenting the gospel, and uh, but you know, then they point to these scriptures, and it's detestable to God to contact the dead. It's like I don't contact the dead. If the Lord puts me in a situation where the dead have to move on, or something has to happen, uh, I, you know, it's all in concert with the Lord. It's got the, the whole point of these chapters of seeking the dead and all that is because they don't seek the Lord. That's where the anger comes in. That's where the wrath comes in. But they don't divide that correctly. So I. Uh, what do I? What, what do I know? I mean, you know, I'm just going on my life. I have certain gifts and certain abilities that, if if I ever said those to Christians, they would excoriate and kill me. They would just literally kill me as being of the devil. So I'm sure some of you can relate. Well, without my my clairvoyance, and maybe I don't even have it like I used to. But I mean, you know, without my uh, whatever it is, ability to go in and out of dimensions and different things, um, I wouldn't even be here right now. It was, like a, it was like that sensitivity, you know, they used to call these people sensitives, that sensitivity uh, allowed me to live. That, that was a, a, a mode of God's intervention, giving me a tool that other people didn't have so I could you know, win. Win what? Win my life. Win, win freedom. Win, win the, the ability to keep going. Which couldn't happen if I walked into numerous traps that were already set. Because they're already, you know, the, 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 the other side is already gunning for me because they know as a child, before I even knew, they knew that I was a problem and they were, you know, seeking to get rid of me. I have more right to be here on this earth than the Satanists do, because God's my father, and because they're usurpers. So the, I would say that, the, the, that me, in, in that stead in Christ, has I have a right to be here, and they, they don't even have a right to be here. They're usurping that right, and they're feeding upon the lambs for their existence, because they've given up whatever made them alive, and because uh, they can't feed on each other. As you know, vampires can't feed on each other. And so they're feeding on us and then act like we owe them, we need to bow down to them, which is absurd. And these people run the religions, all of them, or any institution that's, that's an ongoing thing. They seem to be in charge. It's like, what are you in charge of, man? You have no life. You're a dead man. You're a dead man walking, and there you are, lording it over all the rest of us. Mr. Politician. You're a dead man. You, if you want to live, well, then you're going to have to rearrange your life. Otherwise, you know, I have this ability to see. So I see the walking dead. I can see if you're dead or alive. And, of course, that's very disturbing. I have to run back to my prayer closet a lot because I get freaked out when I see such supernatural things. But make no mistake, um, those of you who are kind of victims of this whole thing, you needn't be. You know, I know that's easy for me to say, but um, somehow we've got to get out of the, having the scars pulling us down. We've got to get out of being bummed out. We've got to get out of... Um, Yeah, we've got to get out of a lot of these uh, patterns, you know, and finally just look, the bullies out there, if you stand up again, they're going to try to hit you to bring you back down. And it's, it's it, you know, gang stalking is global and it's permanent and it's everywhere all the time. But there's, you know, there's a certain healing that takes place within a person that renders them invisible to the stalking. They don't have to separate from other people. It just changes. You know, it just stops happening because it's a supernatural event. 
I know people don't believe that. I remember when Dr. John Hall was telling me that it's, it's all mechanical, and you know, you, you, you've once you've you know been you know harassed in that way, you can't get. I'm saying it's not terrestrial. I mean, and he's a Christian, and I, I couldn't explain it to him, and he wouldn't listen. So you know, so that's the end of that. I mean, that's as far as it goes there. No, I think he's a, he's a very nice guy and everything. I mean, he's doing great service trying to bring awareness to a very, very, um, to the issue of bullying and uh, organized stalking and electronic harassment. I mean, these are, these are things that are so evil. It's, it's just like the chemtrails. It's like being, being sprayed to death while you didn't do anything wrong. You're just st sit standing there. Uh, I understand that. Um, the mystery of iniquity is the mystery of iniquity. What do I mean by that? The mystery of iniquity is uh, um, uh, the working of iniquity for gain. It is simply, um, if you want to just break it down to the simplest thing, it's, it's being in the system. It's where that's why we have, in Matthew 7, Jesus says, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. Because if you're in the system, then you do not know Christ, even if you go to church 35,000 times a week. Right? He says, depart from me, I never knew you. I, I tried to explain it to them. He says, you who work iniquity, which is a statement, which is an Old Testament, and actually an old uh, Hebrew um, kind of phrase that, you know, can include, it can include, you know, workers of iniquity, you know, sorcerers, witchcraft, all that, you know, uh, things that are separate from God. There is a dark side that one can, can work and um, produce miracles and produce income or produce whatever on, on you know, but, but they're enslaved to it. And God allows it, the, the working of iniquity for gain. You wouldn't work iniquity if there wasn't gain involved. So if you work iniquity, it's for gain. It's for money, dollar signs, right? Um, you can also um, be wealthy and not be a worker of iniquity. Absolutely. People under, don't understand this love of money. The desire, it's really down to the Buddhist idea <clears throat> that desire causes suffering, which is the central tenet of all Buddhism. If you understand that, you understand all Buddhism. All life is suffering. Suffering is caused by desire, right, which can be lust and, you know, attachment to the material world. And so, uh, so the relinquishing of desire through the Eightfold Path, which is an, uh, uh, like, like the Ten Commandments, is the way out of suffering. And that's basically what Buddhism is based on. It's based on a, a set of ethics. And those ethics are, um, you know, just like not being a sinner, I make an effort to not sin if I, you know, can. I'll make an effort to do something. And I can't just sit there and, you know, go, oh, well, I've been saved. I, I'm, I'm fine now. I don't need to work anything. No, my works will be judged. I must work. I must you know, produced good works. I've got to do that. Um, it's, the, the, we're not going to sail off to an island and just sit there and, and, and bliss out in the sun. I mean, be fine, but, you know, it, wherever there's more than one human, there's work to do. And, uh, you know, I've had a hard time struggling with this idea that, uh, you know, not everybody is going to go to the light. You know, there's people that are just, they just love the darkness and that's where they're going to stay and they're going to die like that. And I don't need to categorize what that means or what the consequences of that are. I just, it kind of blows my mind, but it seems like there are people made just for that purpose. So who am I to question it? Of course, of course, you know, um, we all tend to want to have it all or nothing. We're all the same. We should all go to the light and be with the Lord, blah, blah, blah. Or he's done the work of salvation for us all. Therefore, whether you work the dark side or the light or the worker of iniquity or not, you're all saved already because he already did the work and the work was for all humanity. So um, you don't even need to accept it. You say, you know, on death, you're all going to go blissing out into outer space. Um, I wish... So I'm trying not to think about things like that because um, I don't want to think about the numbers of humans or some people that do wake up. I, I think there is something to waking up in this life and being conscious of Jesus and realizing the story is true. The gospel is true. 
the life and teaching of Jesus are true, you know, and all that. Even now, they've got uh, this thing where they found the grave of, uh, of course, this is over Easter, hardy har har. It almost seems like an April Fool's joke. But they found the um, grave, and there's, there's Magdalene, and there's, you know, the ba Jesus' baby. I, I don't know if he's called Judah or what his name is. But they've got names, and, and they've got the house of, you know, Joseph and Mary and, and blah, blah, blah in the tomb. And uh, so it proves unequivocally that uh, Jesus was a man, and he died like a man. He had children. It was almost like seeing the Martin Scorsese movie, Last Temptation of Christ, all over again, afresh for the first time. And so they keep pulling this. And the whole idea is to cancel the resurrection. To, to, to say that supernatural things do not happen. That um, uh, the Son of God is resurrected or has divinity. They go, well, Paul started that. Paul was the one that, that, that made Christ into divinity, you know, made him into God, you know, before Paul. And I'm like, no, um, Jesus made himself, made himself known in uh, the book of John, very simply. They want to bring Jesus down to that of just a man and kind of have God out there and man in a fallen state and have no Messiah and have no resurrection and have, you know, in other words, trample upon the gospel through archaeological findings. And I contend there is no grave of Jesus and whatever there is there can, it's completely being fabricated, misinterpreted, whatever. And I'm pretty on pretty solid ground. There's already a lot of doubt on it anyway. But for those people who just must prove there is no resurrection and no, no, hence Christianity itself is a ruse created by men and it's just all a myth and it's all bogus. And when, you know, I see people living like that and when the blows come, you know, it's like, well, then how, how then can you be reconciled to God? Can you just, like one, one guy comes over here, he says, I don't need Jesus, I go direct. Remember that, Trish? I go direct. I, I just don't know what makes people tick. I don't think this is a very happy person, you know, but I don't know what makes people tick. I don't understand that. I go direct. I don't need, you know, um, obviously he's aware of Jesus and aware of the gospel, but it's not good enough for him or makes no sense to him because it's foolishness, right, to, to those who are perishing. It's foolishness in any event. And, um, but we have God direct. What does that mean? You kind of have this distant God direct thing, like every once in a while you say, oh, God, help me through this or whatever. And, you know, and uh, I, I don't know. You got this sort of, I, that never worked for me. This kind of nature God sort of, I, you know, it never worked for me. He's there, the God of the whole universe out there somewhere. But, you know, uh, I have faith. He watches it. I never really developed any faith. You know, it's the Jesus thing that drives people insane with anger. So that's how I kind of know that that's, you know, the real deal, because that's, that's, I don't see that with uh, even with Mohammed, you know, you say something. No, you bring up the name Jesus and the whole place goes into an, uh, shock and awe. It's just everywhere we go, we, 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 that's, you know, so we want Christ. You know, if we don't honor the Son, then the Father doesn't honor us. So it's, it's really simple, isn't it? Look, I've gotten a lot of trouble by picking things apart. And I'm kind of the sort of person that should glom right on to that archaeological finding. You know, that's maybe a, a fault where my, I get intellectualizing about things and I, and I tend to then overstep. Okay, then I've got to reel it back, you know. And uh, so... You know, I tend to pull everything apart so that nothing, nothing is good. Everything is profane and nothing is holy and it's all a piece of crap. That's where I get to at the end of the day. The, the, the gospel, the Old Testament, um, the, uh, the, these people, that, the Western civilization, dualistic thinking, you know, Zoroastrianism is really what, got, what caused Judaism. Blah, 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 blah. I go, the whole thing, the whole enchilada, pull it all apart, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Jainism, uh, the, the, what are some of the other religions? Sikhism, um, you know, um, Zoroastrianism, and all Persian religions, which are the original monotheisms, by the way, not 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 Judaism, and uh, you know, and and the monism of the East and the dualism of the West, 
and it all sucks, and it all sucks, and it all sucks, and I'm just sitting here miserable on my little rock. Ennui, ennui, ennui. I want to get off the rock. Ennui. And guess what? I'm wrong in doing that. God gave me parameters and he spoke to me like I'm a child. And he said, here, work in those. Don't tear it apart. Don't tear your cage apart. Just, just work in those. And um, so I, I, you know, so I'm, I'm free to work at it as I wish. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm forbidden to take uh, classes in it. People can share things with me, but I have to keep my own counsel with the Lord as to whether I believe it or not. So many people have these theories and doctrines now. I, 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 I don't, I, I'm, I'm so horrified by what I'm seeing that I, I just have to be, you know, I have to just get back to what's real to me. You know, I just, I can't, intellectual folly is intellectual folly. I feel a certain cognitive dissonance with intellectual folly. And that is, you know, at some point you have to settle down and say, okay, well, you know what? This gospel makes sense. Um, you know, this, this, this fallen humanity makes sense, needing redemption, I understand that. And, uh, and I've, you know, it's easy to criticize the uh, many people when they see the sort of pedantic way that um, the Pentateuch is written, you know, and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, Genesis and all that. They, um, the Adam and Eve story. So they, 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 they walk away right at that point because it's, it's so juvenile that, that there's no way to, um, you know, continue. You know, well, Adam, were you naked? You, no, no, you're naked. I, I'm, I'm looking for Adam, you know, and that's the part of what, Yahweh? I mean, it's, it's, it's hilarious. And, and you should see these people taking it so seriously. You need to let kids that encounter the, um, the, the Bible for the first time you need to let these kids air their displeasure with such a pedantic document. And then you need to say, you know what? This is what God gave us to deal with. There's a lot of depth in this. And, and you start breaking it down and they go, oh. You know, what seems like a child story, a fairy tale or whatever, you know, suddenly gets real deep, real fast when compared to how life really works. And then suddenly it's like, oh, okay, so this is written so anyone can understand, even a child. The children understand, but the, but the wise men can't seem to crack it. They want to have a lot of doctrines of men explaining it all. Hey, you know what? I rejected the idea of original sin, and, 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 but I don't reject the idea of DNA inheritance. And then there's this whole thing about Noah being the DNA only, and then everyone else was corrupt with the fallen angels. And, um, and so they all had to be drowned. And all that has to be, you know, we can, we can break that down and out. And, you know, it, the, the more you break it down as an intellectual construct with a, f a feeble understanding of history, which most humans have, and, uh, and a feeble understanding of archaeology and, and uh, genetics and physics and um, also the fact that humans have been around for hundreds of millions of years, without having a framework like that, they go, no, they haven't been around, um, that, that, that Satan placing microchips that are 100 million years old, they, he, Satan put it there to fool man. It's like, no, there's evidence all over the place of, of, of this is, civilizations have come and gone for hundreds of millions of years. And much to the chagrin and disappointment of the church that tries to control them. So I, I've had to reject the church. Look at the position I'm in. I have to have my faith in the Lord. And at the same time, I'm, I'm barred from the church because, I'm a th because I actually think. And, you know, but at the same time, I can't rip it apart too much because that will hurt my faith. So we're in a conundrum. This is a kind of a, that, that's summing up exactly where I've gotten to. Maybe you can relate. It's a, it's a kind of a, a, a narrow razor's edge we walk. But the Holy Spirit's real. The gospel's real. The Lord God is real. Jesus is real. And uh, I kind of take it, you know, going back to having to be to the pure, all things are pure. I just take it as, it as it's written, you know, just I look at the structure of the story. I go, OK, and I'm going to get my editorial mind out of it and go, OK, basically, this story is explaining why things are the way they are for us today. You know, the curse um, of humanity needs to be broken, i.e. the cross. OK, 
if that truly broke it, then obviously this then comes into a wrap up period. And, uh, you know, and whatever that means to me, there's nothing on the other side of when this thing ends, that's it. You know, there's not another chapter. It's, it's written, it's done. And I suppose maybe they'll find archeological findings from us in the, the debris scattered through space after the, uh, the earth explodes or whatever. But keeping it on that simple level, again, you know, sort of careening off yesterday, I, if I don't do that, if it doesn't get into uh, I am the child and that's my father, you know, that relationship and looking at Jesus the same way, looking at the, 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 the garden the same way, looking at the, all the stories the same way, if I keep looking with an intellectual mind of tearing everything apart, I will tear myself apart. If I keep entertaining all these doctrines from people, I, I, they make me so depressed. You have no idea. They just destroy my, you know, the, the, the spirit. They destroy. And I don't think these people are aware of what they do with all their theories, but they're, they're trying to correct Christianity or they're trying to correct something. And, um, they're not getting any traction because people are not going to go there. So I, I don't know what, I just can't do the doctrines of men. I just have to keep my own counsel and do the, do the doctrine as the Lord gives it to me. I've been so disappointed by theologians, especially on, you know, certain key chapters, key phrases, key verses. I've been so disappointed by pastors, I can't tell you. I've been so disappointed by um, judgmental Christians that, uh, that don't want, you know, that don't want me to think. And they don't want me to, um, to be myself. They want me to become a hypocrite so that and then they'll stop throwing rocks at me. They want me to not have like, you know, things happen to me that happen to me in my own u unique path. And they want to deny those things as being of Satan or, or you know, deny me really or deny and uh, whatever it is. I, you know, I can't just live like a piece of crap. I, I have to be able to have life too and breathe too. And, you know, the, when they say repent, what they mean is go under mind control and brainwashing and let us shame you with peer pressure so that you conform. And I just can't go there because God would hate me. Maybe he hates them. And they think he loves them. I don't know. It's really, it's just really weird. You know, it's just a really, I guess that's the price of being different. I'm paying that price. My whole life I'm paying that price for being, you know, uh, well, the one thing at the end of the day, even when incarcerated, I was always free. You know, and, and, and people hate that so much. They hate freedom. I mean, real freedom, not, not the fake United States freedom, but real freedom. And they hate free thinking, obviously. They hate creativity. They hate nonconformity. They hate, um, you know, they're jealous of excellence. They're, they're jealous of, uh, you, you know, anything that is, you know, anything that's different from them, they want to put it down so they don't, so they don't have to be jealous of it. And they occupy most of the religions, these people. I, I don't know why that the religion attracts these kinds of people. But they are intellectually, obviously, vapid, you know, shallow. Uh, they have no discernment. And um, they, they're so busy brainwashing each other into following the rote thing that none of them will, I mean, look at it this way, they're all dead already. All their gifts and faculties that the Lord gave them have gone, have atrophied. They're as good as another dead man walking. And then when you run into them, I was, was curious, when people start, like on the street would start saying the Bible says this and the Bible says that, trying to apply it to my, what's something I'm talking about. 
it always made me very uncomfortable, like, like a used car salesman, you know, applying the pressure. And uh, so I will continue in my, there, I, there is no possibility that I can, um, you know, the, 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 then this, you know, yesterday's incident with the hygienist before you think she's all an angel is like, well, that's why, you know, we need to be in these churches because then we can help each other. And at that point, of course, I walked out. Uh, I've, all I've ever gotten out of a church is, is, is simply rebuke and uh, disapproval and uh, bullying, to tremendous bullying, and death threats. And that's, that's been my experience. <laughs> and we tried. Oh, boy, we tried. And, and it always came down to that. I'm like, well, you know, I, I just want to worship the Lord, don't you? You know, so when you get down to the idea of simple faith... Sorry, that's not good enough. Ah, I think we're disturbing somebody right now, big time. But you have to understand something. You know, I didn't bring a war into your churches. You did. You're at war with all the people in your congregation. You want everyone to sit down and shut up and just nod their head up and down to whatever the pastor says and, uh, and, and cut off the thinking process like neutering them all, you know, gelding them all. And I just don't think that's, uh, you know, that's, that's just like Islam. How, how's that any better than Islam? So we continue. I just wait till the Lord starts giving me messages to give out, you know, I mean, certain things. I, I see there's something coming up. Just wait until they reject that as heresy. No, I've heard theories, and I've heard people putting out all kinds of theories. I've heard people trying to influence me this way and that way. My, my faith is, and my understanding of God and the situation has not changed from day one. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's been the same you know, structurally the same. I mean, I may have further intellectual understanding into corruption and different things and, and, and you know, contradictions in the Bible or whatever they are. But, it's, it, 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 but see, all that can be overlooked with the fact that God gave it to me, so in that act, God purified it. So I'm just going to see what I mean. It's always come back to that, no matter how far I've ventured this way or that way. It always keeps coming back to the same simple faith, simple truth. But it's funny how most people don't accept that. You know, they, they have to, you know, I think they're so uncomfortable in life, they have to add to it or make it into something more dramatic or more something they can understand rather than something that their intellect would reject. And I just can't, I'm tired, I, you know, that. I'm tired of going down that road. I'm, I'm satisfied with it the way it is. That's like, remember, the whole Saturn thing was trying to tear me over this way or that way. It's like, ah, Yahweh is Satan. Okay, I understand. But then, then finally the Lord, the Lord showed me why that is. And I, I explained it to you, so I'm not going to go back over that. But uh, <clears throat> I was satisfied, you see, and then, I, and then I moved on. The work I was called to do, I did. And there's a whole other group of people that are, um, have rejected me because of that. But, you know, um, but that's the work I had to do. And, and so if I ever went for approval of anything about me to anyone, um, they would say no, no, and no. So therefore, I quit seeking approval. Well, iron sharpens iron. <laughs> That's true. And the Lord uh, is always bumping us up against other people for iron sharpening iron. Many people that have faith, no faith, this faith, that faith, Hindus, Buddhists, Islamics, whatever, all kinds of different people, atheists. So iron does sharpen iron, yes, truly. All the incidents, all the events that happen in one's life sharpen you. That's right, that's iron sharpening iron. Um, but as far as the Christian cults, not interested because it's basically dumb, sharpening, you know, dumb, dulling, dumber. You know, accepting rote phrases 
accepting certain um, uh, interpretations of scripture, all nodding and agreeing on those, and then applying them to when you see people doing something other than simply saying, oh, you see you're in violation of this, you could die. Just want to make sure you understand. Thank you. Please um, leave me alone. <laughs> Then we're going to find you and we're going to get your mind and we're going to force you to think the right way. Believe me, I've had this. I was thrown out of like Buddhism and Hinduism, all these different things we were doing because of my mind not being right. So I think, you know, some of you can relate. I'm up, No, I'm, I feel that my mind is a gift. The Lord gifted me with having a... Um, you know, a certain heart and a certain mind, a certain way. It's a gift. I may be fallen and born into a sinful world and may be sinful myself and I need to be redeemed, absolutely. But, you know, but the gifts I've gotten, there's another side to it. I mean, there's the dark side, you know, but then there's the potential side and the, and the gifting side. And, um, you know, a lot of people think, well, I'm, I'm just a piece of crap, filthy rags. I'm no good into the world. You know, the Lord can't, there's a technical issue there, but you have gifts. So you're not a piece of crap. So whoever programmed you in the evangelical church obviously destroyed your mind because you think you're a piece of crap and you're therefore doing the most, the, the most sinful thing you could ever do, which is denying the gifts that God gave you is a total sin, evangelical, and you're guilty of it and you need to repent of it. Because if you don't pick up that cross, you can't pick up the cross unless you pick up your gifts. All right? Otherwise, the Lord cannot look at you. you. You don't exist. You know, he also said in the book of Revelation, your, your works will be judged. Well, how can your works be judged if you don't have any? Since you're a piece of crap, you can't, there's nothing that you produce that's worthy of anything. You're just so happy that it's such a piece of crap like you was actually looked upon by the Lord and saved. So you can just keep on your piece of crap way and your piece of crap existence, but you know, you're just so amazed that the Lord chose you even though you're, you're unworthy and a total piece of crap. And so with that attitude, my friend, um, you cannot produce good works because you see you've already given yourself an excuse, i.e. you're a piece of crap. You see the problem? Uh, th this is a, you know, this is called spiritual abuse when they, when, they, when they teach it that way. They put too much emphasis on piece of crap and no emphasis on the fact that uh, we are here to, 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 to express our gifts. So, I mean, without that, it's like songbirds not singing. It's like things God creates not doing what they're created to do. So you can't be there either. It's just the damnedest thing. I mean, I'm not saying it's an easy walk. I'm just saying it's, it's it, whenever we draw a conclusion, we're wrong. Every time we draw a conclusion about this situation, we are wrong. Every time. So we have to let it float and, and to not grab on through our desire, which is what keeps us tethered to this world, we had grab on to a concept or grab on to a doctrine or grab on to somebody else's understanding. We can't do it. The moment we do that, we die. I don't care how cogent it is. I don't care how much sense it makes. The moment we do it, we die. The only way you can live day to day in the concert with the Lord is to not grab on to any of the concepts of man, but just be there like a child. Otherwise, you don't enter in. And then at the same time, you need discernment, i.e. using your gifts, to fend off the wolves and to, and to conduct the, um, the, 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 the ministry, if you will, that God set you upon the earth to do without grabbing on to anybody's theories or anybody's you know, understandings. You have to get it from him and go step by step in that way. If you can share a word with somebody, share a prayer with someone, share a psalm with someone, share an insight about anything, you know, that's great and that's all fun. You know, that's all kind of like, to me, that's um, special gifts. That's not like a, a taken for granted thing. That's like, uh, oh, the Lord's gifting us with a little bit of fellowship, how wonderful. But, it, it, but the Lord realizes that fellowship cannot last long because we're all on individual paths and we have to go, you know, sometimes 
depart company here, reacquaint company there, go this way. You know, we're just like on a mission. And so because we're on a mission, we just, um, our lives are really not our own. And we just have to kind of figure out what the Lord wants us to do and, and ask him to keep inspiring us to do that thing that he'll have us do. And when you proceed ahead like that, there's a lot of people who criticize you and who, who want to influence you and want to steer you this way or that and deter you from your path. They don't do it on purpose. It's not like they wake up in the morning and they want to do that to control you in some way. It's just kind of, it's like a natural, um, it's just part of humanity, you know, part of the fall, if you will, that people do that. No man upon this earth has the right doctrine. No one on this earth has any understanding you're the only one that has the understanding of what you need to understand regarding the gospel. Nobody can tell you what it is. That's part of the mystery of it. You need to know it, and it's not an intellectual knowing in the first place. It's a heart knowing. It's a different kind of knowing. So nobody can tell you what it is. They can sit there yapping their jaw for an hour like, like I am, you know, and they, I can tell you my theories, but I can't tell you what it is. Uh, today, I have no theory of what it is. I can talk about it and, and, and insert myself in my own struggle a lot in it so you can see what I'm grappling with. And if that helps you to come, to, but it's you're the one that has to understand it. I understand it in my way. You need to understand it your way. Maybe your way is I, I go direct. And then the joke on you is that, well, direct means you have Jesus, but you don't know it, but that's fine. He'll, you'll, you'll understand that later. Um, it, it doesn't, you, right? There's no getting around truth. But, but ultimately, you're the one that has to have the, you're the one that has to understand it, okay? You're the one that has, that has the gospel and nobody can explain it to you. It just has to be born in you, if you will, by the Lord. It's something you can't really give yourself. You can hear about it. You can hear people talk about it. You can hear what they say. You can hear them bullying you from the pulpit. Bully, bully, bully. You will believe it this way, you're going to perish. You're going to go to hell. If you do this or that, you're going to go to hell. If you do this or that, you're going to lose your life, you lose your whatever. And, and to which I just say, then take it from me, Lord. Fine, if I'm in violation, but I'm not because I keep seeking you. If you would all just walk your own walk, you wouldn't have to then be bothered with how someone else is doing it. I mean, you know, if I see a picture of Benny Hinn, and all that, and I, I know that he's been a charlatan and all that, but I'm not concerned, okay, I don't care, you know, he's, if people fall for that, that's between them and God, that's their, you know, they should know better, and they do know better, and they will know better, and it's just, you know, that's, that's that, but he's, I see someone like Benny Hinn being shopped around as being a, uh, some kind of fake, it's just not my, um, it just goes in one ear and out the other. I'm on to the next, you know, I'm on to the next thing. I don't care about Benny. I mean, Benny Hinn, as far as I'm concerned, it, he's free to do whatever he wants to do. I, I've, I have no opinion. I don't care if he influences people. The Lord doesn't seem concerned about that. So I'm not. But other people send me stuff and they're outraged about it, you know, about these certain people. I mean, I've talked about my, you know, when I've had an insight in the humanity of, a, say, a guy like... Um, I say Rick Warren, but I mean, that's as far as it goes. I'm not going to make a career out of it. You know, I point it out for people that may need to hear it that day, but I can't keep, fo I can't keep focusing on all this. I don't feel really connected with um, their business enterprises, which they call churches. I, I, don't, I don't really relate. To me, it's got nothing to do with what I'm doing. So it's, I mean, it's interesting, you know, to see... Uh, you know, corruption exposed or people, you know, but it's like, I can't relate to the clothes they wear. I can't relate to, uh, you know, the way they conduct their services. I can't relate to the kind of um, worship music that they have, or they call it worship music, which is another joke. I can't really, you know, I'm, oh, it's real purdy and everything, but it's, you know, it's, it's like got the form of, you know, of a thing, but it's not the thing itself. You know, it's like a nice set of false teeth which is like, you know, the recording industry for Christ, the Christian recording industry is basically a nice set of false teeth. It sounds real nice. They get the best singers and best players and, you know, best equipment, and best engineers, best mixers, whatever, and uh, best producers and, and uh, you know, the best Nashville has to offer, if you will. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's pathetic. So I, I don't even, 
it's not part of, my concern is more things like this. People, I'm, I'm not concerned with people who say they're Christians or not. It's just people in general I'm interested in. If they say they're of a certain religion, if they go to church, I'm not against that too. Because I have, you know, a lot of my friends go to church and I understand going. If I could go to church under the radar, I'd go myself, but I, it, it, it doesn't work that way. I automatically cause um, a huge ruckus. No, I, I don't have to say anything. It just happens. So I, I tend to stay away from groups of people just because I understand the effect that I have on them. I think it's, I don't know why it is, but it's always been since I was a little kid. It's, it's always been the same. It's not something that I could be, I mean, you could give me a lobotomy maybe and it wouldn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't try to do, no, if I just sit there and follow along with, the, you know, with my Bible open and I can have a little pen and scribble little notes like everybody does, you know, and if you get your Bible all marked up with lots of notes in it and ragged, and they, they, these people bring these sick books to, you know, to prove how, how much, how they've really been in that Bible to show you, boy, you haven't been into it like I have. Look how New Year Bible looks. Look at mine. And I can't tell, I mean, come on, you know, that five minutes of that and I'm, and, and, and you can fry an egg on my head. Give me a break. Because I can feel all that, all that, every little thing and everyone's humanity and every thought they all have. And uh, it's like, I can't, you know, that's just, it's the empath thing. Oh, that's the power of Satan. So thank you pastor. Thank you so much. Well, what do you want to do? Cut my head off? Maybe then we wouldn't have that problem. Uh, so, but, you know, before you feel like there's a Christian privilege in all this, the same thing happened in Buddhism. You know, the same thing happened, um, you know, uh, the hard Christians that, I, you know, they argue in their forums. You should see their forums. It looks just like Christian forums. They're quoting scripture back and forth of the Bhagavad Gita, and they're arguing, and they're talking about, and they're praying over one another. It's amazing. It's the same structure, the same thing. People get so mad when I point that out. I'm like, didn't you know that existed? They're looking for peace. They're tearing each other apart. They're talking about how evil the world is. They're talking about the end of the Kali Yuga. Such an in intrigue with this Prudyapadaka, this is the whole guy that started I didn't I, the Hare Krishna movement and then he's ended up dead and they felt his foul play. It's like, you know, you could apply this to any charlatan Christian thing. But then you see these pure hearts who are really seeking the whole um thing. And I know it maybe sounds funny to you, a a, a, a kind of a cartoon character like Krishna. Um, but they have scriptures, very profound scriptures and very uh, profound understandings about life. And, and they, they want the same things and they're, and, and they're just as intellectually astute as you are. If you were to hit them with the gospel, they would hit you back with a scripture equally as good as the gospel, uh, equally as, good, as profound as that, and um, you know, from their own understanding. So is Krishna Jesus and all that? I mean, is, is this basically cultural... Um, is this a cultural bias here? And the answer is yes, there's a Western cultural bias and um, God works through all, all, all these people on earth. He's not separate from anyone on earth. He didn't create all these people just to trash them into hell. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, that, that's one thing that sent me out the door of the Christian church was, you know, this, this glee over people going to hell. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. There's all this glee. You just want vengeance because you feel you got a cheap deal in life. You got chumped in life and you want God to open the can of whoop ass and take them all out. So you're praying for World War III. And that, that you know, because you're going to be raptured anyway, so it's cool. And that sent me out the door because, I mean, the idea of having, being so cold to our martyrs, you know, like they're martyred, but you're going to get raptured. Right there, that is a total 100% evil sin. The other guy gets, gets beheaded, but you're going to get raptured and you're, you're okay with that. That's, you should be ashamed of yourselves for that, totally. Um, I, one guy tells me, he goes, I'm going to get raptured. I go, you don't believe that. And it's like, after I said that, it's like, yeah, I don't believe it. So you know, the next thing to do is just reject me. You know, just, just stay away from me, and then you won't have to worry about that. You can go back to believing something you don't believe.
well, we're not appointed to wrath. Um, yes, we are. We just don't call it wrath. If, if we lose our lives because of a war or something, it's not the wrath of God. It's like we, we go home. You know, that was our service. Doesn't mean it's a, it may be wrath for somebody else, but it's not wrath for me. I don't need to be raptured to, to, as a way to say, oh, God's not appointing me to wrath. He's going to rapture his church. He's going to take care of his bride. What happens when he doesn't? Now, I know for a fact he does take care of all of us, you know, and, and individually. And, and it's, it's just, it's, it's hard to say any one thing like what I say, you have to take with a grain of salt. Because why? You can't believe the way I believe. I'm in a process. You can't possibly be where I am. You can learn from me, but you have to t t keep your own counsel. And you got to go, you have to have a relationship with the Lord because he's the only one that can teach you. Because you have to know certain things that um, you know, you know, the, you, you got to be able to understand. And then when they come around with their intellectual arguments of different variations, it's all to get you to trip you up on your faith walk, on your walk of faith in the Lord. And they don't know they're doing it. You know, they're just sharing all these theories, but they poke a hole ultimately in um, a, a child's understanding of a thing. And uh, they, that, so, so the intellectualism is a thing that, that, that kills you in the end. And uh, so I would, you know, caution everyone about that. My, what I do, I've always had a gift for ignoring what people say. <laughs> I mean, not, not, not criticism. I'll take that to heart and I'll suffer over that for, for years. But no, ignoring when they have a theory this way or that way. You know, I just keep coming back to the simple thing and I'm fine. And, and I realize, ah, you know, I don't need to tear apart um, any of the scriptures, I accept them all as being true at this point. You know, and uh, in my, right, because he's given me understanding about a thing. I can't discuss it with you. I can't discuss, all religions are true in a way, you know what I mean? It's just what God gives you. I'm gonna take what God, oh, try to understand this, because this is uh, kind of a, a wise thing, you know, and we hit on wisdom every once in a while. But whatever God gave me, that's what he gave me. I dance with the one who brung me. So I keep it simple in that way. I'm going to feel okay. I emphasize feel because if I feel like crap, I'm not going to do anything. If I don't do anything, there's no work produced. So I got to give what God gave me, and I have to kind of reject everything else. And uh, as long as I do that, I'm, I'm free. But when I start entertaining all these different theories and theorems and about all, you know, I mean, we're intellectual. I like tearing things apart in physics and looking at CERN, what they're trying to do and uh, getting paranoid about the God particle being divided again into a million different parts. I'm, I'm cool, man. You know, the thing is, it's just simple faith. It's just, I need my father to get me through the day. I need to pray in the name of Jesus. That's who brung me. That's, that's, and just keep it simple like that. And, and you know, uh, my understanding of the gospel is I'm born into sin and born into a fallen state here upon the earth. I don't know, uh, I, without, I'm not certain about, I've, I've done past life regressions of things and it came up inconclusive. So I don't know <clears throat> if I was here before or not. I'm, maybe I, I can't prove it. So I don't keep my eye on that. I keep my eye on the idea that, okay, I, I have a problem and I need a solution. And then, and then God gave me the solution. That's it. And humanity is born into that same thing. So if, if, if we have a little childlike story of the fall, fine. Fine. So people can understand. So if a child doesn't have good adult uh, teaching around, then he can open that Bible up and he can get it direct because children can understand it. And so God's taught me how to look at all that. Okay, so I have it all, all the, I have the framework for the whole thing for me. I know that if I explain how I look at it to anyone else, they, they won't uh, agree. And, the, and every single different person there is will all agree differently, so everyone will disagree. Therefore, I'm just, what can I do? I just have to kind of keep it simple, keep it real, uh, keep on the page, whatever. If God called me to go to church to serve, I'd go to church to serve like he has with a lot of you. That, that's, he, he isn't calling me to that. He calls me to do things like the Paul Walker thing and other things. I do a lot of things out there.
I, I can't I don't want, I can't boast of it because it would be boasting of something that I I'm not doing. It's it's really the power of the Lord that does it. I don't have anything. I'm I'm weak. He's strong. It's that 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 thing. But I've got to do. You know, he's taken me places and put me in situations before where I don't even know what the consequences uh, of. There are consequences that I may not ever know. And that's fine. I have to let it go and move on to the next thing. You know, I'm sorry that they will uh, do things where the blood cries up to the ground, the Lord's going to deal with that situation. And he'll use people like me, you know, to deal with it. And um, and then it's like, and then and then of course there'll be a problem, you know. But uh, raising awareness of a thing like that is a very important thing to the Lord. That the blood, because when the blood cries up from the ground, there are restless ghosts. I, I hope you understand that. I mean, most people don't even understand that. Uh, that there are um, well I've also seen into the realm of other realm other dimensions where people exist as a kind of a false heaven and they go through the satanic thing and they arrive there and uh, and that's real and hey, heck that's not written up in the Bible that's nowhere and I know that I know that that's real and God showed me that that's unbelievable that there could be this other world they live in that's you have to go through this right and that world is all um, bliss and beauty and they get it in it and I don't I don't know how many people get it but uh, you know that there's some other are they aliens I, I I don't know a lot about it I've just seen it and when they say well you're talking about something no I'm not saying something that I have a theory of I'm talking the fact that I have literally seen it and interacted with it. Is that, is that the realm of the dead? Is that another realm? Did I, did I die an overdose uh, in the hospital and then there was another life that is going? So I've had several lives in my lifetime. Has that happened? Is that possible? Well, am I to be shushed for even having a thought like that? Okay, I think you know where I'm coming from, you know. So, uh, I walk my walk, and you walk your walk. And I'm not going to criticize your walk. You know, if you need to do this sort of um, structural thing, like you've got this kind of framework for how you're doing it, you know, it's none of my business, really. And if you want to believe in the rapture or the, uh, you know, hellfire for, you know, billions of humans because they deserve it and cackling, it's really funny... Um, go ahead and have your, but it's none of my business. All I know is what, what God set before me, and that's all I can really know. And he put the, um, you know, the word of God in my heart and basically handed me this Bible and handed me this Jesus and gave me this framework, okay? That's the one who brung me. That's where I dance. I dance with the one who brung me. I realize and recognize that every other person has a different view of it. None, no two of us agree on any of this stuff. Therefore, you out there have to not take what I say or someone else says or all these other theories. It's you that has to come to an understanding and a peace with your Lord, like me with my God. And, you know, I feel that that's the key to actual great spiritual teaching is to, to, to understand that shift that it's on you just like it's on me you cannot take my intellectual understanding or my words about the gospel or whatever and take it to heart for yourself you must do your own walk and have your own understanding and it will not be the same as mine and that's okay we right we we allow for all those differences because we're 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 in a kind of a deaf dumb and blind fallen state here and so we're not going to have it accurate but we ha will have it accurate in our hearts because God will put it there. But then to keep it there, we, ca we can't tear it apart. And we can't let other people tear it apart. You just have to uh, 
laugh at them and say, okay, well, you know, you have your understanding and I have mine. If it gets to the point where they say you're going to go to hell or you're doing it wrong or whatever, then you might have to break company and move on. You know, but you have to keep your own integrity. Right? Because the only way this works to give you strength and healing, so you, you can put up with the gang stalking, you can put up with the spiritual battles, is you have to have your own strength in the Lord, your, your own understanding. Mine won't help you. It may spark you into thinking, and then, you know, then you've got to work it out. But what I've been given is a very simple framework, and I've tried to tear it apart a million ways, and then I've repented on that, and then I'm, I'm back to where I always end up back to. If you got um, derailed by any of my vicissitudes, um, it's not my fault. It's yours, because you're supposed to keep your simple faith, simple walk, and your understanding and your close counsel with the Lord. That's the only way it works. Everything you say, if I let it uh, derail me, then it would be my fault. I'm not you, and you're not me. And there isn't one collective gospel for all. It's, it's the Lord has to put it in our hearts whatever it really means. What it means to you, it does not mean to me, and never will. What you think about, you know, how we got here and your mythology about, uh, which is mythology, by the way. It's all mythology if it comes from man. If you, anything you think of of how we came to existence or what, what's really going on, that's your mythology. That's your understanding, not mine. To me, none of that stuff's important anyway. To you, it may be, and that may be central to your walk, and um, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not coming against it. You know, have it. Uh, but, but, you know, I don't feel any longer a need to go convince people of anything. Like I tell people, it's like, well, however you work it out with God, you work it out. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. you go, I'm, I'm gay. Will God hate me? It's like, I can't tell you, man. You know, you work it out. You know, you obviously want the Lord. And so you work it out. You know, I got plenty of things I do that God doesn't like that I don't like that I want rid of my, and then they slowly fall away. But I have to work it out with the Lord. I can't tell you. I'm not going to give you a lecture about whatever your, um, whatever you consume or whatever your sexual proclivities are. It's just really, um, you know, I, I mean, if you're if you're sitting there, you know, throwing virgins in the volcano or sacrificing, uh, you know, a children to Satan or something, I'd say maybe you'd have a problem with God. But I mean, you know, that that. <laughs> That is so absurd that it would, we would never even have that discussion. All I know is you've got to work it out. You know, I'm a sinner, meaning that I, I, I do things that are in rebellion of God that I don't want to do. I've received words before, and I've botched them all up. And uh, it's, it's just not a real pretty walk. You know, it's, it's back and forth and fits and starts with me. So if that's you, then I'd say welcome aboard and uh, get to it. I mean, this idea of keeping asking people whether you do this or that, it's, you know, you'll never be able to write with God, is an excuse to keep you away from God. You're giving yourself an excuse. Oh, God hates me, so I'm just going to stay away and you know, keep on. But I'm miserable in this life. So no, you know, you've got to go to God for relief, but you know, you've got to come as you are. And then, you know, like, like, you know, not everybody puts naked before the public like me, but but, but uh, you've got you've got to uh, become naked before him. You know, I mean, really bear your soul. You know, and and concerns, and he's they, he loves that. He love I know he loves that. It's just like whatever troubles are on my shoulders, I got to go to the Lord and say, you know what, I'm a man born in this situation. Of course, there's troubles on my shoulders. Lord, would you please take those off my shoulders because I was born, you know, it was inevitable anyway. And, you know, you are joy, you are light, you are, you know, uh, I just want that. And besides, it's not, it's, that's not my cross to bear, the troubles of the world on my shoulders. That's, Jesus bore those. He paid for that. For me to put it back on my shoulders again, it's, it's just not fair. You know, it's, it's paid for already. Yeah, another little insight about Jesus, huh? I think the other thing we tend to do is we tend to elevate people that speak 
that's why I've tried to deconstruct this with having espresso and having no commercials and having no structure, you know, and having, you know, and, and letting it be a free form thing. The reason why is because I just, we don't want to go there. You know, you see me as brother, you know, as Zef, Z, whatever. You see me as, you know, equal. And, you know, I, I have to tear it down a little bit. And because and, believe me, if you, if you ever met me, you would be completely disappointed if you have put me on any sort of pedestal, which people tend to do if you have a YouTube channel or whatever. People tend to put them on pedestals and everything. So we had to deconstruct this to prevent that. You know, then there's the idea that when you do that, then they give you disrespect. And that's just as bad as too much respect, right? So we can't tolerate that. We have to, you know, now the Lord has a remedy for when they disrespect you, you, um, you walk away. It's, it's the story. It comes right from scripture. It's the story of the, uh, of the, of the, of, 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 of the, where he sends you us out in twos, you know, to, and if they reject your word, you know, you are to, uh, walk away. Uh, and let me translate that. If they disrespect you, you uh, you disappear like a ghost, the, the, the ne never to be seen again. Because there's too much work to do in this world. You know, there's too to waste your. Jesus is saying basically there, don't waste your time. If they reject your word, you know, he also said Sodom and Gomorrah is nothing compared to what they're going to get. So, yeah, he. If you're a believer and, and then you disrespect someone that is a, you know, that the Lord has sent, obviously the, you, 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 you've already incurred the Lord's wrath right there through your ignorance. So we don't want to accord too much respect, but we don't want disrespect either. There's kind of a middle way where you don't lift somebody up on a pedestal so that you're disappointed, you know, because, you know, not everyone has a gift of speaking. And so we tend to, I don't want that gift to be lifted up. It's just basically exercising a gift that's got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with the Lord having put it there. You know, so it will spark you to doing your own walk and your own thinking and your own understanding. So no, I don't tell people, well, I'm shooting heroin. Is that bad? I'm like, dude, I just really have nothing to say about it. You know, go to the Lord or not, but do your walk. Don't ask me whether you should do heroin or not. Uh, that's just, it's absurd. It's, it's not even, uh, go to a church and they'll tell you not to do it. If, I'll tell you, they'll tell you, don't do that, don't do this, and don't do that, and don't do the other thing. If that, maybe that's what you need. You want to be spanked. Uh, but, but then there's a game that gets played with, with, you know, you addicts, which is, you know, I know full well. You go there and then you're being good. And then, um, you know, then you decide to rebel and then you're, and then mommy's mad at you. I mean, isn't, haven't you had enough of that already? There are ways of getting off heroin if you want to get off heroin. But to ask me if I think you should get off heroin, obviously I'm not going to answer that because that's absurd. Uh, should I not be gay? Well, should I do this? No, it's absurd. All of that's absurd. And I won't get into that. You, you've got enough people doing that uh, and look how, how that's working for them. You know, it's built in. It's already baked into the cake what you should or shouldn't do, where you should or shouldn't go. And, you know, this, this, this wanting to be a baby or an infantile and be told what to do, and that's your form of repentance, that's a very um, uh, primitive way of, uh, of going about your life. Don't, I wouldn't do that. Take responsibility, you know. If you don't like the heroin uh, use, then, you know, find a way to curtail it. It's not got nothing to do with me. I pray that you find your path. I know most people um, would not be injecting poison into their system, uh, you, you know, if, 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 in a pure world. But we don't live in a pure world. We have a lot of pain here. What does heroin do? It, it alleviates pain. So it's already understood. Is Jesus heroin? No. Jesus will not give you a rush like heroin. Should I drink? Well, probably not. Should I, should I eat too much or the wrong thing? Probably not. But it's not for you to tell me. I already know this. 
You know, if I give it to the Lord and I'm still not getting a result, well, okay. You know, there's a lot of things I don't like that I'm still suffering with. So don't look to me as any kind of role model because I will only disappoint you. You Because why? Because I'll be just like you. Just as flawed as you. And that, see, and that right there is the problem with the entire religion. That these people that do the speaking and do the advising and all that are on these pedestals. And so they have to put a mask on and become hypocrites. Because if you saw them as they really are, you would be very disappointed and disrespectful. So they, t they fall for the temptation also of power and being able to lord it over you. But no, I will not advise you. Everything I state on this show is my opinion and my walk. In other words, it's subject to change without notice. As, as I change and I'm led this way and that, it just keeps kind of going and sometimes it contradicts and sometimes it, it corrects and sometimes it, you know, it's always getting back to the simple faith, simple truth, simple gospel, simple, simple, simple. It always keeps getting back to that. Uh, I think God's just breaking me of being, um, uh, applying intellectualism to a, to a situation that is more of the heart, you know, more of the soul. It's just, it's a common mistake. You know, I, I, you gave me the gift of intellect, and um, you know, I, I need to apply that to music and to composition, because that's where um, you know the the intellect can you know you can really come up with things if you put your you know mind to it, or 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 just um, just say, Lord, I'm just waiting on you for the next thing. If you whatever gift you whatever weapon that you put in me, that I'm like a quiver. Of arrows, you know, and the Lord, the Lord's the one that's slinging the arrows, and He's the one aiming at this and that, and I'm just there as the quiver. He just picks this arrow or that arrow, and then He fires it. I mean, I'm, that's that's really. I don't see myself as any more important than than the quiver of arrows that the Lord has slung around His back. I'm a tool. I'm happy to be that. I'm, I'm, I I don't care. I'm happy to just. I, I'm just existence is happiness. You know, at this point, I mean, today at least. And think, well, there's still spraying out there, but it's not as bad. It's just, oh, there's a huge swath right there. Oh, okay. they're doing it, huh? Yeah, I just. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, being poisoned to death from the sky is really not my idea of fun. And you know, most people don't even know why they're getting like, you know, cancer and stuff. But hey, I look. There are people, human beings, flying the planes. I pray to the Lord to stop them. Lord said, it's in my hands, I'll take care of it. I, there's nothing I can do to change it. It's going to be the Lord or nothing, because I, what am I going to do? Call up the, the chemtrail base and say, stop doing that? <laughs> well, they've already destroyed the environment as far as I'm concerned. And then, then, you know what's interesting? The EPA works for them. Can you imagine that the, the Environmental Protection Agency works for the chemtrail flyers, works for that military industrial complex. They're, they're, not, they're, they're, they're all in on that together. Can you imagine that the people that are, that are sworn to protect the environment are destroying the environment just to get you, you know, to punish you? Can you imagine that's the whole purpose of that agency? I mean, I'm giving you the real story, not the, you know, kind of the story. That's the actual you know, fallen nature of all of our institutions, you know. But I mean, the, the weapons are aimed on you, and the way they're doing it is by killing the animals and the fish in the sea, and that they would do all that on purpose because they know what the results are of all the spraying and the geoengineering. And then the EPA swoops in and says, um, well, it's unsafe for you to be here, or they have their rules and regulations on coal or whatever, when they're part of a, a, a much bigger conspiracy of genocide. And I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not talking about just humans. I'm talking about polluting and poisoning the environment in the name of protecting it. Can you imagine that that would be your job that you would go to every day? And then, and then on top of it, you feel like you're doing a really good job and that you're really helping, uh, like Obama, feeling that he has the best presidency in the history of the world. 
Can you imagine actually having that mindset on top of everything that's happened? Can you imagine talking about how wonderful it is that Democrats were all for clean water and clean air when, you know, when it's, it's been a bipartisan effort, of course, to destroy our skies and to destroy our, pollute all of our land so that, well, so that we will be compliant uh, to them. Oh, it's in the name of depopulation as well. So they, they've, they're all justified. I mean, Bill Gates, the biggest eugenicist on earth, he flies around guilt-free, does this, does that. He's, he's going to poison all the Africans and depopulate. Everyone wants to depopulate Africa. And, uh, and Obama goes down there and scolds them for wanting to have a refrigerator. He says, boy, I wish we could do that to America. Well, we're working on it. Don't worry. Him and Gates hanging out, having a tete-a-tete on how they're going to kill all these people, and then sitting there and putting their best face in front of the press. I mean, I, I know what's going on. I, right? I mean, I, I understand how it's so sick and twisted that most humans could not accept it. They couldn't possibly see how the, the, you know, that leaders could get to that point. But at least I give me some credit for having the wisdom to know I can't change it, folks. And I prayed about it and God allows it to be there, just like there's an equilibrium. We are in a fallen state, obviously, and all I have to do is look at the sky today to know it. But the Lord is my solution, and that's all I can do. That's the only thing I can do about the chemtrails, about uh, corrupt politicians, uh, about corrupt bureaucrats. There's nothing I can do about it except just go to the Lord. I can't correct it. I can't wave a magic wand. You know, it is what it is. How it ever got to the point where if you want a cushy job in, in a, as a bureaucrat, you've got to be on, on the devil's end of things, uh, it's beyond me. You know, I'm not, I cannot figure this world out. I don't understand people's motives. If you're going to give your soul away, you're basically your life and be a dead man at a job so you can provide for your family who's also going to be dead very soon. I, I just don't understand. I, you know what? It makes no sense. And so I'm tuning out. There is no need to expose anything because it's, 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 uh, it's as Bob Dylan said in All Along the Watchtower, you know, some of us here think that life is but a joke. I mean, I take it seriously because God created it, but it is kind of a joke, right? I mean, the biggest joke of all, and I'm going to end right now because I'm, I'm blowing the message earlier with this uh, talk, but, you know, <laughs> the idea... That, I mean, it was one thing that, you know, to have a, a, you know, kind of a prophetic statement that the U.S. military can't win a war and then retroactively it goes and loses all the wars at one like Iraq. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. But confirm, 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 confirm. But now I have a deeper understanding of what that really means. It means that wherever the U.S. military fights, uh, we, okay, are fighting ourselves. There are no wars against enemies anymore. It's us versus us, Right? That's what the chemtrails are, us versus us. That's what uh, any kind of, the whole thing with Iran, it's us versus us, right? Um, and uh, same thing in, uh, you know, every, everywhere we go. It's us versus us. It may not be that with Russia, but, you know, or any other holdouts. But in general, it's, you know, us versus ISIS. It's not us versus ISIS, it's us versus us. We supply ISIS and then we supply the, our kids and then we have them go bludgeon each other. Great, us versus us. That's not only defeat, that's, that's, um, that's so far beyond a anyone's ability to, to even comprehend. I mean, I say it here with the idea that you won't comprehend it. But I put it out there for comprehension purposes to show at least somebody that the, abs that makes our situation a joke, absurd. Anyway, I will uh, we'll take that up another time. Well, there's nothing more to say about that. It's like, you know, the, the way I deal with it is I don't deal with it. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. And with that, I bid you shalom. <laughs>